Good morning. Uh, you're listening to CBS Radio with Sandy Bonita. This is your community outreach program uh, this week. I'm very pleased to have someone new in studio, a foundation that I've never had the pleasure to interview and find out more. So, Jerome, thank you so much for being here this morning. Thank you so much for having me. So tell me, what foundation are you with? I am vice president with Jalen's Gift Foundation. And let's learn a little bit more about Jalen's Gift Foundation. Um, since you're the vice president, how did it begin? And what's your personal connection to this? Well, Jalen's Gift Foundation, it began in October, I mean, August of 2013. And the way it came about was my wife and I, we lost our son Jalen Thanksgiving weekend in 2012. And it was, for us, the most devastating time of our life because a couple of days prior, it was Thanksgiving. Oh, okay. And yeah. we were at my mother, my mom's house, and she has the, the, the whole thing, the aroma, the smells. It's Thanksgiving, all that kind of stuff. And the moment that sticks out to us the most is when my wife and I were all at the dinner table. We we're all eating and stuff like that. And it's fantastic. My mom makes great food. And there's this empty ch- seat next to me. And we keep saying the whole time, next year, Jalen's going to be here. He's going to be here next year. And and I couldn't wait. The, the reason why we went to my mom's house this particular day, as early as we did, because I love her stuffing. And my my wife is a picky eater. And she's, <laughs> she's probably going to be mad that I say this, but if you know her, no, you know no, she's no. picky. I, I can relate to her. No onions, <laughs> no tomatoes, no pickles. Every, no time we go to, every time we go to Jack in the Box, anything, it's uh, everything with no pickles, no onions. That's her. That's my wife. Yeah. She... She know if she she can tell you she doesn't like food just by looking at it. Oh, you know, that's me yeah. all the way. The more colorful, <laughs> I don't like it. Yes, that's that's her. She is that level of picky, but she loves my mom's stuffing. Mm-hmm. So we're here, and the whole time I'm excited because Jalen is finally having my mom's stuffing, and we're saying the next year he's gonna be here. And and well, he he didn't make it through the weekend, mm-hmm. and we get to the hospital and they say the one thing that we, I mean, we never planned for this. We, we go there, we just think, okay, my wife's having some back pain, everything's going to be fine. And then they tell you, I'm sorry, there is no heartbeat and oh, you have to deliver your baby. And it hits you. You're like, whoa, what do you mean? Jalen, two days ago, Jalen is supposed to be right next to me for next Thanksgiving. And now you're telling me he's gone forever. And so when we delivered at the hospital, it was the it was something we had never expected. We were asked so many questions, you know, do you want to have a cremation? Do you want to bury him? Who's going to take him here? All these things like that. And the whole time I'm staring at this at my son and I'm thinking you're supposed to be eating stuffing and Thanksgiving turkey with me next year. You're not supposed to be in my arms right now. And when we left the hospital, there was nothing. All of the support groups, all of the information that was given to us the groups either didn't meet or they met so infrequently it didn't help us no one was meeting because it was the holidays time so yeah. the cost of Rena paying a lot of money for burying him and it we just didn't feel well and, and we got home and we looked at the crib and we cause we had everything ready yeah. we had his clothes we had his toys and things and we just we like he's never going to wear these clothes these clothes he's never going to play with these toys he'll never sleep in this crib and the scrapbook that we had for him had just a couple of pictures and then that was it and so i can't imagine the pain that you and your wife just endured during that moment oh we were devastated and it was gonna it was our first son and in my wife's family there's nothing but girls they're Mm -hmm. all so it wasn't just us who was excited we were all excited the family it was a new life coming in to your family and for something to happen like that, how how do you pick the pieces up? How do you go from there? And like I said, I'm so thankful that you're here this morning because I'm sure that there is someone, some of our listeners that maybe have gone through it. Or if not, they know someone that has, has gone through, you know, a similar story like yours. And now with Jalen's Gift Foundation, um, there's that support that, you know, you, someone like yourself and your wife and... Uh, can provide to these families or it can provide to these individuals and things like that. So, um, you know, from a tragedy, it came something that, you know, you guys are in a position that you're able to help and you're able to pretty much bring awareness to this, you can say. Yes, that's one of the biggest things is this happens more often than we even realize. Uh, the CDC came out and said in 2012, there were over 1.9 million 
baby deaths in the United States, and that includes from a miscarriage to a stillbirth up a, until the first year of life. Yeah. 1.9 million. It's one, in at, one out of every four pregnancies will end in a loss before the first year of life. Wow. And we had no idea. Yeah, neither did I. And like I said, you know, that's why I enjoy bringing people like yourself in with, you know, new new foundations. Where sometimes we focus so much on what has been established here for 40, 50 years. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. But then again, you know, we have to shed some light on the newer organizations that are here to comfort and are here to are brought to the community in order to provide programs that are not available, you know, with these existing organizations. Yes, the the fact that there was something, there was nothing out there for us when we left the hospital, because when we walked out the hospital doors, we both looked at each other and we just said, well, what next? What do we do now? And no one was, no one was there to really hold our hand. And my wife said, I want to make a life for our son. And that's where we started with Jalen's Gift Foundation. And we didn't even start the foundation with this mm-hmm. idea that we we're going to do everything we do today. Yeah. We really just started with my wife. We were just collecting stuffed animals across the community. Mm-hmm. We just Craigslist, Facebook, all kind of yeah. things. We collected stuffed animals. And all we did was on Valentine's Day, we, we took the stuffed animals. We got a whole bunch of little flowers and mm-hmm. we just put Jalen's gift and we delivered them to all the host places in town, the orphanages and some of the other children who were in like Ronald McDonald House and, yeah. and children of those that nature because just wanted to share the love that we had for Jalen. And beautiful. that's where Jalen's gift came from because it was a gift from Jalen. And from there, we decided we wanted to do more for families who had lost a baby because we didn't want any other family to feel like we didn't feel lost. And that's when we decided to start Jalen's Gift Foundation and from there, it's kind of it's been this whirlwind of things we never expected. But our main goal is that no family should ever have to bury their child and pay for that. No family should ever be turned away, and no family should ever feel like they're alone in this tragedy because you're not. You really aren't alone. And the the way we felt, I I never want another family to feel that same way again. Like I said, I I, I can't even you know wrap my head around what kind of pain you felt. You know, holding your your son and not even seeing him, you know, open his little eyes or anything like that. So um, it's it's a beautiful thing that that you came up with this idea, especially your wife. You know, sometimes it it always starts off with, um, you know, that turning point. Something terrible happens and, you know, you get inspired to do something better for someone else. And there's no greater feeling. I'm sure that you've met families that have probably, you know, shared the same experience, but they look at you and they probably thank you because now you and your wife are the ones that can provide that shoulder, you know, that you needed one year ago. Yes. So that's, you know, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, Let's talk about this upcoming event that you're having. Um, Go ahead and share with us when is it happening, uh, what what type of event is it, and how can we get involved? So what the event is, it's called Jalen's Gift Foundation's Pregnancy and Infant Care Health Fair. And really, the event is centered around promoting healthy babies and healthy pregnancies in Las Vegas. Because for our foundation, we provide services for families who've lost a baby. We provide memorial packages to the hospital. We, we go to the hospital, take professional pictures. We have a support group online that meets in person. We have doctors on the board that provide information to families. And we cover the cost of memorial, your memorial costs for cremations and things of that nature but we only reach families who've had a loss and the information that's given to the families from our doctors and things like that it's to me it's too late because you've already had the loss yeah so our thing for this year and moving forward is we not only want to be there for families who have lost a baby we want to be there for families who are expecting who are currently pregnant or who may want to be pregnant in the future and bring all these resources into the community together and let everybody know, like, hey, these resources are out there. These are tips you should know about for being pregnant, um, for being healthy in your pregnancy, or uh, you have no insurance, low insur- or you know, low income families. There's help. You don't know what things you should do, what you should eat. You may have gestational diabetes. You may have. Um, we've had families that have had multiple medical, uh, I'd say, concerns. Mm-hmm. They didn't know where to turn. Yeah. And they didn't know what they were and what they meant. And they're a little afraid to go talk to the doctor or the gynecologist and, like, you know, be able to say, hey, look, these places are available. Come talk to these people. 
They'll set up appointments with you. They'll give you the information you need. And just, it's it's kind of scary when you're pregnant yeah, and you really, and you don't know where to go. Uh, I agree with that. And not, you know, with everything that you say, um, because these are services that a lot of the times are not provided. And, you know, what if there's a future mother to be? Not only is she scared that, you know, she's going through these changes and now, you know, she has another life inside of her, but maybe she doesn't have the money or the copay to go see yeah. a doctor. Or, you know, maybe she's feeling something. A lot of the times, um, one of my really good friends, um, she's pregnant right now. And hey, Congratulations. Uh, congratulations, Nellie. <laughs> Nellie, <laughs> it's congratulations. Her, it's her first baby. Yay. And um, she's, she's the type that she will Google every little symptom. And it drives her husband insane nice. because for any little thing, I need to go to the doctor. Yeah. I need to go to the doctor. I need to go to the doctor. And she was talking to me. She's like, it's getting to the point where, you know, I freak myself out. She's like, because I I get these feelings or these symptoms and I explain to my doctor and sometimes, you know, I feel fine. She's like, but some it's my first time being pregnant. She's like, I just wish I had someone that I could talk to. And, you know, maybe they would tell me like, oh, don't worry, this is normal. Or, OK, this is something that you definitely need to go and check out. Things like that. So, you know, um, do you have a website where they can get information on where to go for these comfort um, yes. groups? So our website is www dot jalensgift.org and that's j-a-l-e-n-s gift.org and that's the website to our foundation and all of the services we provide there upcoming events and all the information you need on our foundation is at that website you're listening to cbs radio this morning uh with sandy bonita uh, we're here with Jalen's gift foundation um it's a beautiful beautiful nonprofit organization and i say this why because not only is it new but it also emphasizes in providing comfort and hope after a pregnancy or infant loss. Not only that, but now you're switching gears as well and you're educating the community on how to prevent, you know, infant loss or pregnancy loss. Um, I always believe that the more you know, it's the better. So if you're pregnant or you know someone that's pregnant, why not join this beautiful event that's happening? When did you say? The event is happening August 30th. It's from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. It's going to be at the Green Valley Ranch Resort in their La Cascada Ballroom, which is in the Grand Event Center. And come, it's it's a free event. There will be giveaways. There will be prizes. There will be multiple health experts on site. We'll be having live demonstrations such as a car seat safety, demonstrating the proper ways for lactation, breastfeeding, holding a baby, all that type of information, as well as informational videos that will be playing throughout the time, such as why is it that car seats face backwards instead of forwards? I don't know, yeah. but this is why. And we'll have type of videos, questions that we typically get that we all have when we become pregnant, we'll have information for. So make sure that you put that in your calendar, August 30th, Green Valley Ranch. Inside their Cascada Ballroom. Look like, like a Cascada Ballroom, that's correct. <laughs> <laughs> um, make sure that if you have someone who's pregnant or is, you know, we're trying to prevent the loss uh, of, of a life, you can say, the loss of, you know, anything. You don't want anyone feeling what you felt no. when you know, Jalen was gone. And you're doing the right thing. I can tell you that. You and your wife are doing an amazing thing for many others because... Uh, I'm sure that you're providing these services and these health fairs and you're educating the community on, you know, preventing this or preventing any more fatalities, you can say. Yes, I would. I would love for there to never be a need for our foundation. I, w- I w- Actually, I would love for there to never be a need for our foundation on the infant loss side and to really just be able to help provide the information for healthy babies and healthy pregnancies because a healthy community starts with a healthy pregnancy. Of course. And so that's what we, it's so devastating when a family comes and you see the hopes and the dreams and everything that, that's lost because of this. And then when you hear, I didn't know about X, Y, and Z, what happened, or maybe there's something I could have done to make a change. But if only I had known or if only someone had told me and you really take it upon yourself to think, well, why don't we make it so that someone does tell people or that you do know where to go for your questions and you're not, oh, Google is great. It's amazing. But 
sometimes being able to pick up the phone or just having information readily available for you mm-hmm. and, or just talking to other people who are going through the same thing, sometimes it's the best help. And that's that's one of the things I've realized with our foundation that we have with the online, which you can even find us online for our Facebook because we have, we're on mm-hmm. Facebook as well. But within our closed support groups, all of our support groups are closed off. They're private support groups where we have over 300 families and things like that oh. internationally involved in the support groups. Uh, with English and Spanish support groups as well. It's just seeing everybody talk to each other and mm-hmm. be there for each other. And that's where you get sometimes the most information is just from talking to somebody or just being around people who are going through things like you are, whether it's pregnancy or it's the loss. Yeah, and sometimes, you know, there's so many people are very different. Some can take it a certain way and some can't. You know, maybe it's not you, but, you know, that was your niece or that was your nephew yeah. and you still can't wrap your mind around it and you just need someone to comfort you and someone to talk to you. You know, like I said, it's better to know things than not know. You know, it's better to prevent them because if you know um, how to be healthy when you're pregnant and if you know how to prevent infancy loss you know that's already a huge difference that's being made so i applaud you and the entire crew at jalen skip foundation for coming up with such an amazing organization you can say and it truly you know it's something that um it's kind of taboo because you don't really speak on it after it happens it's one of those things that it just doesn't make sense because there's so many questions especially if you have a miscarriage or you lose a baby We've had families who've lost babies the day before they were actually due to have their Mm -hmm. pregnancy, the baby passed. And you have families like, what if he just went the day earlier? Or or families that after the baby's born, it's six, seven months later, and the baby passes. And no one likes to talk about it because it's really hard to say. And and everybody treats it differently, especially if you've had a child afterwards. Then it's, you know, people may say, well, you know, well, at least you have other children or, you know, at least you can get pregnant again. You know, mm-hmm. there's always hope or it's, maybe it's better that the baby never, you know, there's always so many things that happen around a pregnancy loss that sometimes it makes people uncomfortable to talk about it. Yeah. And it's hard for the parents to talk about it as well because it, it's it's painful. It really is. Yeah. And so that is the benefit of the foundation that there are like minded individuals who who've experienced it with you. We do a lot of community events together because one of our big things is we don't want to always meet in grief. We have the English and Spanish support groups. We meet once a month. So we'll meet for the English support groups once. It's always the first Sunday of every month. We meet at Nathan Adelson's Hospice Compassionate Care. Okay. And we also meet for a, a Spanish support groups once a month at um, Sunrise Hospital. Aww. So we we'll, and then b- Throughout the month, we have we're at Facebook group where we have over 300 families. Mm-hmm. And it's not just 300 families in Las Vegas. We actually have families from Japan, from Korea, from Greece, from all yeah. kind of places. And so it's very, it's very nice to have families all times of the day, always online. And one of the biggest, one of the coolest stories, and, and this is one of the things where I'm hoping the health for will do. Mm-hmm. When we first lost Jalen, my wife was on the Internet all night long, every night posting about our stories our son and posting stories because we had we lost him to a thing called group B strep and we had no idea what that was can can you tell us what that is well it was a it's a bacteria that forms in the i believe it's um, i want to say it's in the utero uh, i'm not gonna, so it well it's it's a it's a it's a, it's a common bacteria that for, that uh, forms inside um I say vagina but you know mm-hmm. <laughs> i don't want i don't want to be censored <laughs> but but so it's, it's a bacteria infection and what happened was is pretty rare because what happened was it actually spread into the baby and actually started attacking him before we were even like 35, 37 weeks. Because most places will not actually test for strep B until about 35 weeks. Okay. And the reason why is for that is because, especially if you're having a C-section, it really only supposed to affect the baby coming through the vagina. Okay. So us having a C-section, a scheduled C-section, it was something that wasn't even considered a risk. And so when it ha- when Jalen was infected by the bacteria, it was pretty rare that he was infected and he would pass when we were only 27 weeks into the pregnancy. It was something that shouldn't even even occurred at this time. And so what happened for my wife was that we she posted about our story all over the Internet, everywhere you can imagine. She posted all night long. And there was this lady in Greece who contacted her and said, well, what happened? 
And then my wife talked to her, and they actually still talk to this day. They're actually pretty good friends. And she told her the story. And her and in Greece, overseas, they don't test for strep B. Oh. So she went and got tested, and she was heavily in, her, she was heavily positive positive for strep B. And she had notified the doctors, and the doctors started testing. They started giving her the antibiotics. Her baby was starting to get infected, oh, no. but they're able to catch it in time for her birth. And when she gave birth, the baby was in the hospital for another two weeks after after the birth, but he came home. Wow. And so uh, his name is Tomas. And if you go to our foundation and you see the heart and all that kind of stuff that we have, she has that heart and it's over his crib because she says yeah. Jalen was his guardian angel because if it hadn't been for our loss and Gabby talking about it, he would have most likely not have made it because he, w- he had already started to becoming infected and she was still multiple weeks out before they would have caught it so it was for us it was amazing she sends us a picture every year on his birthday oh, that's <laughs> every beautiful. year we get a picture of him on his birthday i believe he's he's one year old now almost turning two handsome little baby and so but he's our little Jalen baby Aww. and for me the health fair i'm hoping to do that for some other families as well just yeah. If nothing else, if there's just one family, if there's one baby that someone goes, you know, let me get tested for something or let me look into this. And they are able to find something and make it and fix it before it becomes an issue, before they actually ever need our services. Mm -hmm. And then the health fair is a success. Beautiful. Like I said, very inspiring um, what you do. Like I said, it's just um, pretty much bringing awareness. Like you said, if someone um, hears something and they have no clue what it is, but they sort of feel the same symptoms and, you know, you want to take precautions, especially if you're pregnant. And, you know, obviously, like I mentioned, my friend Melly, she Googles everything, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <So do> just <I. laughs> psychs herself out all the time, um, which she lives right by Green Valley. So I definitely have to tell her to check this out. And, you know, like you mentioned, just knowing certain things when it comes to to babies, um, you know, another friend of mine, it's funny because we say like there's everybody's having babies and I'm over yeah. here spraying like spray so I don't catch it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, she just had a baby girl and her name's Luna. And um, she was saying that um, when she was leaving the hospital, her um, her fiance was putting the car seat in the obviously, you know, when you're yeah. leaving and stuff, but he was putting it on wrong. And he got upset because she corrected him. And she's like, well, the baby car seat can't face forward. It has to face backwards. But he thought that she was just, you know, yeah. being hard on him. Yeah. And being, being typical. You know, yeah, I know. <laughs> I know where that goes. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's not it's not about that. It's it's about just learning and getting informed. And like I said, there's nothing wrong with checking out a free health fair. So yes. August 30th, uh, no charge to you. There's going to be raffles going on we'll have raffles we'll have multiple it's sponsored by march of dimes and desert perinatal okay um, associates which is a high-risk pregnancy um, center so they actually the in two of our doctors on our board is dr wilkes and dr adishak and they they go they really go above and beyond so when we actually have families that come through the foundation they actually sit and they'll provide consultations with them and actually they'll take them on in their next pregnancy and march of dimes they deal with a lot of uh, premature babies yeah. when you're when you're born prematurely, and they give a lot of resources and help for them. So they're both really behind this event. They really they're sponsoring it and helping us put it on to really not only give information because that's what they do. They try to provide information on healthy pregnancies and and awareness to what does it be to mean to be healthy when you're pregnant. Yeah, and we also have some people because it's not just when you're pregnant, but then what happens afterwards. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, what do I do? My baby's two months old. I have no idea how to feed her or I want to lose my How to hold the baby. How to I'm hold so the baby. scared. How do I wrap the baby up? I, I remember when we left the hospital, I, I probably drove. When we had, cause we, I had my other daughter uh, mm-hmm. earlier in 2012, uh, Janelle, who was a handful, if anybody knows our daughter. We left the hospital and I probably drove maybe 15 miles an hour all the way home because I was so afraid of everything. Yeah. Then we got home and she's just staring at me and I, and I looked at my wife and said, well, what next? <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing here. How do we feed her? And she yeah. threw up food. What does that mean? Does that mean she's sick? Does, yeah. There's all these questions you don't know. 
And so, so definitely make sure you try to um, head out there if if you know someone who's expecting, um, or you you just had your baby yes. and, and you have questions and things like that. Um, come down August thirtieth, Green 30th. Valley Ranch inside La Cascada Ballroom. La Cascada Ballroom. Um, what time does it start? Ten a.m. Ten a.m. Uh, raffles, doctors are going to be there answering questions, and it's just going to be a beautiful event, you know, that Jalen Skip Foundation has put together. And um, like I said, I can't thank you enough for coming in this morning and just sharing all this information with us, sharing your personal story, sharing your services and things like that. And I hope that someone listening to this, you know, uh, will get inspired and will yes. contact you. And not only that, but um, they will attend this free health fair. I hope so. Massage and Vivo will also be there. We'll also be there providing free on-site massages. Oh, nice. So that'll be also nice for the ladies who are pregnant and, and everything else. So come down and get a nice massage and learn about pregnancy and some safety tips. It's it's going to be a it's, it's going to be a great event. We're hoping to do this at least on a yearly basis if not more, but we're excited this is our first time doing this and uh, I'm I'm completely excited for it. I can tell and it can only get better from here. Um where can they contact you? So they can contact me. They can send an email mm -hmm. to admin, A-D-M-I-N, at jaylensgift.org. Okay. Or they can contact us via phone, 702-703-4497. And they can call any time of the night. And uh, my wife and I, we don't sleep very often. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we're always up getting phone calls all through the time, all throughout it the night. It just shows your dedication to this foundation. Yes. And I'm especially excited because my wife is pregnant with our <gasps> with our second son. Oh! Congratulations. So thank you. So he is he is due in October. Uh, oh. Little baby Jerome Jr. Jerome you definitely Foster have Jr. to come. You have to come back and you have to bring him in. Yes, <laughs> yes, we're we're excited. We're we're, we're taking it. You know, one yeah. day at a time. We're in the third trimester and it's exciting. We're yeah. we're hoping our our little rainbow baby is what they always call the the baby after a loss. They call mm -hmm. it the rainbow baby because after the storm comes the rainbow. So. Yeah, we are. We're excited. It's an, it's our, it's going to be our, our second son, and we're just hoping for the best right now. So she'll be at the health fair. She'll be participating in the health fair Aww, as well. Beautiful. So it's exciting for all of us. Um. So 10 a.m. up until when? Up till 3 a. Or, sorry. Up until 3 p.m. Perfect. Okay. So 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. again, August 30th. Make sure uh, you log on to Jalen's Gift. You can go to jalensgift.org, okay. www.jalensgift.org. On our homepage of the website, it'll give you all the information you need about the health fair. And from there, any other information they have about our foundation is all on the website. Videos, um, any information they want on the health fair is, is there. And All your social media links are there. The Facebook. If anybody's looking for us on Facebook, they can always just go to Facebook and type in Jalen's Gift Foundation. If anybody has ever experienced a loss or knows someone who's experienced a loss, on Facebook, they can type in Jalen's Gift Foundation Support Group, and all of our support groups will pop up, and they're welcome to give us a call, and we'll add them. Because they're a closed group, we'll have to you know, we'll yeah, add them approved. to the group and things like that. So it's, it's all there. Well, I thank you so much for being here this morning, Jerome. Thank you so much for having me. Again, uh, you're listening to CVS Radio. If you have any questions or concerns and you want to learn more, make sure you check out jalensgiftfoundation.org.